Hey, what's up, everybody? We have a new YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe right now. Leave a comment on the video. Share it with your friends. It's also a podcast. Three and out. Wherever you listen with me, John Middlecoff, Apple, Spotify, we have you covered. As well as thevolume.com. We have merch. Check out. I got three and out hats right now. Thevolume.com. Search the podcast. Buy some merch. Okay, I wanted to do a little Middlecoff mailbag. It's actually halftime of the Bill Steelers game. A little bit of a rout. And uh, wanted to fire in a mailbag for Tuesday. You guys know the drill. At John Middlecoff is my Instagram. DMs wide open. Fire in them. Get your questions answered here on the show. Uh, I'm a Cowboy fan. That's from Jackson. And was wondering what you think about trading Dak for another quarterback. Kind of like Stafford Goff trade. Well, this always gets back to... Until I know the coach GM with Washington and New England, now we know Adam Peters is there. Now we know Gerard Mayo is in charge. You start maybe getting a little clarity of what they're going to do. Until we know the coaching situation, is Mike McCarthy going to get fired? And as of recording this, he still has a job. Now, maybe Jerry didn't want to fire him today because he just took a deep breath, wanted to take a step back. Maybe he's waiting till Tuesday when there are no games on. Uh, to kind of own the headlines. I mean, at the, at Jerry's core, he's kind of a marketer, right? And if you fired him the day, not that it would get lost in the shuffle. I mean, we would all talk about it. But with the two games going on, it's not as powerful as firing him on Tuesday or Wednesday, which I would expect them to do. Then if he's fired, and I, I think it's fair to assume, you know, Belichick is not just in play. To me, he'd feel like the front runner. Is Belichick signing Dak Prescott to $45, $50 million a year? I, I think the answer is no. But, like, what are the options? Like, Jimmy G. Dow sucks. You can't, you can't bring him in. Who is that Jared Goff-type player that you could trade for? I, I'd have to really think about it, but it doesn't really seem like it, it exists. You know, part of Jared Goff was he was a solid player and then had fallen on hard times, and the Rams were over. And let's face it, you got to get, and I said this the other night, the Rams, or excuse me, the Lions deserve credit. They had two options. The Niners and the Rams both wanted Stafford. Here's two ones and our quarterback. And at the time, you assume both ones are going to be in similar spots, right? In the 20s. So the offers were very similar. Well, do you want the $25 million Jimmy Garoppolo or the $25 million Derek Goff? And because Brad Holmes, who I actually, I forgot his name last night, and then that viral video of him screaming in the elevator. It's like, oh yeah, Brad Holmes. It kind of had a brain fart. Uh, Chose the right guy. Because Jared Goff's a better player than Jimmy Garoppolo, especially today, obviously. So I I, I just don't know if, like, who's Jared Goff? Who, who's Jared Goff? I, I don't know if he exists. I think that was a pretty unique scenario. But if I could do that type move, part of the power of Jared Goff, he's made $25 million a year for the last three years, and he's scheduled to make $25 million a year uh, this upcoming season. I think his exact number is like 26. How do you beat that? Like, I mean, he's playing more like a $40 million guy and he's making $15 million less. So it allows you to build the team. Like to me, ideally, can you give him like a three-year, $100 million extension? Do something like that? Because uh, to me, Dak wants $180, $190 million. And good guy, high character, solid regular season player. But th- there is a James Harden playoff element to him. Th- there just is. Three straight years, five interceptions total in the playoff games. I, I can't win like that. Question. This is shocking. Green Bay, Dallas. I really think sometimes I, I think the Dallas conversation, you know, can be a little manipulated because it's the Dallas Cowboys and they're like the New York Yankees or the LA Lakers. And then there's what happened on Sunday, which I've had, what, 24 hours to think about. That's, that's one of the craziest playoff games I think I've ever seen. It was just like, is this, is this really happening? Kind of like when the Titans ended Brady's career. That wasn't necessarily a blowout. I think it might have turned at the end because Tom threw a pick six. But it got to the point where, like, is this really going to happen? The difference was it was just they were pounding them. Touchdown, 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 pick six. So does it look worse for McCarthy or Aaron Rodgers? You know the crazy thing about Mike is three straight years, 12 wins. Three straight years of 12 wins. They've won the division of two of those three years and they've hosted a playoff game now in 2021 and 2023 in the first round they lost them both 
two two home playoff game losses in the first round. That's pretty unacceptable. Because the one thing I'll say for Aaron Rodgers is like, how do you really judge him this year? He tore his Achilles five plays into the season. Now, would it have gone well? I would say probably not as well as I thought. I mean, shit, I picked the Jets to win the division. Would the Jets have won the division with a healthy Aaron Rodgers? Probably not, right? Probably not. Would they have won 10 games? You'd think if he'd stayed healthy the whole time. But would he have stayed healthy? Their old line was bad. All their quarterbacks were getting hurt. He might have inevitably got hurt. He's been hurt before, broken collarbone, concussion, who knows? He was a sitting duck, and he can't move like he once could. So McCarthy's season was worse because of the way it ended in the playoff. Like, it doesn't get any worse than that. You could argue Aaron Rodgers was just like, uh, you know, uh, incomplete. Uh, But I do think he's going to be heavily judged next year, which it's going to be hard. First off, big fan. This is Adam. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Anytime you say, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, I know you're going to come in with a good one. Just interested if this bit of history exists or not. Has any team ever attempted to bug the opposing team's coordinator box? I feel like this is a ridiculous question, but curious is uh, if it has ever happened, even been a concern of visiting teams. Well, if you've studied the Patriots, it's a major concern for the Patriots uh, for opposing teams during the Belichick-Brady era. Teams always thought the away visiting locker room was bugged. Uh, they were always very uneasy about headsets going off. Now, obviously, I, I don't, I've don't. i never heard of it. I'm sure if you got some of these guys who have been in the league a long time, you know, an Andy Reid, uh, Vic Fangio, guys that are like 30, 40-year lifers, Trying to think of, I mean, there are countless position coaches who have been in the league for 25, 30 years. They'd have stories. They'd have stories. It's hard to throw that out, though, if you don't have evidence. So a lot of it is just paranoia, which is a huge part of football. Because a huge part of football is paranoia over your information getting stolen, which has definitely happened over the years. Bill to the Cowboys realistically, if they fire McCarthy? I really think if they fire McCarthy, now that it looks like Harbaugh's, you know, not the 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 LA Chargers head coach feels like an upset. That feels like everything is trending that way. I think there are two made options for the Cowboys. Do they try to get a long term answer and go Mike Vrabel, bring him Arthur Smith, and kind of add an element of toughness to their team, or do they go a little more short term? I mean, I'm on a million text threads. Just offer Bill Belichick three years, seventy five million dollars, right? Because you're not going to offer him some six-year deal. He's 72 years old, right? So Bill Belichick is not, this isn't a 10-year fix. This isn't a five-year fix, probably. So I, I think, I hope Belichick goes there. That's the most interesting. But if I was Jerry and Steven, or definitely Steven influencing Jerry, maybe you want to think big picture, but I think those are the two names. They're, they're not hiring a coordinator. They're going to hire a guy with a resume. And it doesn't feel like Harbaugh's an option there. So I think Bill Belichick, everyone's talked about the growing relationship him and Jerry have had. And to me, Vrabel uh, makes a little sense. Kind of a big name, kind of Parcellsian type guy, a Parcells guy, a Belichick guy, a tough guy, old school, uh, but also new school in the sense of, you know, he's been coaching in this modern day NFL. So I my guess is when and if, I guess if and when and what feels inevitable when Mike is relieved of his duties this week, that it's one of those two guys. I would put the leader in the clubhouse is Belichick. And if you told me Jerry Jones had passed away two years ago and Stephen Jones was in charge, I'd be like, yeah, I think they'd be more inclined to hire Mike Vrabel because that's a guy you could see as like a 10-year head coach. But because Jerry, over 80 years old, I, I, I would, and Belichick would give... I mean, he would just make them the number one story in the NFL constantly. DraftKings Sportsbook, an official betting partner of the NFL playoffs, is bringing you an offer to help make the playoffs electrifying. New customers can bet five bucks on any game and get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook now and use code John. New customers can bet five bucks to get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code J-O-H-N-JOHN. 
The crown is yours. Heirs are keeping Eberflus. Isn't the isn't that evidence that they're going to keep Fields? If they draft the new quarterback and it doesn't go well in year one, they'd have to fire him. But it would be hard on a young quarterback to fire the coach after one season. I'm wondering because you seem certain the Bears will trade Fields. I was actually thinking about this watching Josh Allen sling it around. If Sunday wasn't evidence that you have to get a quarterback to throw within the pocket to compete in your own division, I don't know what else information you need. Obviously, Jared Goff has been solid now for a couple years in in Detroit. And Jordan Love looks like a mixture of Favre (laughs) and Rodgers. Now, I'm not going to just say he's going to have some Hall of Fame career, but clearly the body of evidence over the last, I, I, I don't know, month and a half, you would, if he was a stock, you would buy a lot of Jordan Love stock. You, you really would. I mean, he kind of can do it all as a thrower. So, Eberflus is on the hot seat entering next season, whether they have Caleb Williams, whether they have Justin Fields, or whether Peyton Manning comes back and starts a quarterback for them. It does not matter. Matt Eberflus, to me, if they were to start slow, like two and four, he get fired in the middle of the year. I actually think it complicates, like, How are they getting the cream of the crop offensive coordinator? Now, money talks, shit walks, but I I, I didn't agree with the decision. There were too many good coaching opportunities to upgrade. Hell, you could have rated your own division. You don't think Ben Johnson would have been interested in drafting the number one overall quarterback and with a team that has some infrastructure of talent with DJ Moore, some young offensive linemen, uh, some young defensive players. So I I disagree with the decision to to bring him back. And I'm I'm not one to like call for a guy's job. And I, I don't think he's you know, I'm I'm not acting like he's some complete failure. He he proved this year as a defensive mind pretty solid. But th- there's a quarterback coach league, and I don't know. I, I don't see it. To me, Justin Fields is gone. I I would bet thousands of dollars right now that Justin Fields will be traded. Now it's to me, it's hard to gauge the market. If you told me they got a fourth form, if you told me they got a second, I, I can believe it all. The desperation, you think he'll get a better pick, but he's going into year four. You know, contracts end, and then you have to decide on what you want to do. It's why the Miami Dolphins find themselves in a tough situation. Two is better in fields, but in terms of like, what do you do with this contract? So, I, un, you know, it was officially it, Caleb Williams declared for the draft on Monday. He's going to be the number one overall pick, and he's going to be on the Chicago Bears. Packers fan here. Love the content. Question for the bag. How do you define NFL Executive of the Year? Haven't heard much talk about Gudikins in consideration, despite several factors that I'd expect would warrant at least including him in the discussion. Love is looking like a future court franchise quarterback, but does the fact that he was drafted a few years ago not really help the case for this year? Also, Green Bay didn't really have any big free agent signings, but they seem to have hit on a lot of draft picks are the youngest team in over 50 years to make the playoffs. I think sometimes with these awards, coach of the year, executive of the year, who cares? You know, how how many coach of the years do Belichick and Andy Reid and Pete Carroll, like not as many as you think. Like how many years has Andy Reid been arguably the best coach in the league? Coach of the year is basically just, we think you're going to suck and then you're decent, right? Executive of the year is, yeah, we just... Didn't think you were that good, and you made some moves, and now you're in the playoffs. So I I wouldn't get caught up on that. To me, your organization has hung their hat on a couple things. You've always got good, young, offensive minds to be your head coach. Holmgren, McCarthy, now LaFleur. You've always had Ron Wolf, Head Thompson, and now Goot. And you've always had quarterbacks. So whether you get the credit or not, who cares? If I was a Packer fan, even if you end up losing by 20 points next week, which they're a 10-point underdog at you know San Francisco, and Shanahan has beat him multiple times with Aaron Rodgers, so it's a tough matchup. Though, this Green Bay team offensively, to me, feels you know pretty complete. Now, they're very dependent, like you said, young players, but to me, the future is very, very bright. If you guys can shore up that defense... The, the best part about what you guys have going for you, and this is McVay, this is Kyle, this is Andy, your offensive quote-unquote mastermind that influences the quarterback is your head coach. 
it doesn't get any better. So yeah, we might have to fire Joe Barry. Now it, that that quieted a lot <laughs> as he embarrassed Dak Prescott in the first half, and the game was over going into halftime. But I I, I wouldn't get caught up as much about you know coordinate or coach and GM of the year and the consideration. I'm with you. He made a decision that was very, very difficult. He said, Aaron Rodgers, like, I'm going to trade you. And I think a lot of teams would have just tried to figure out a way, right? And they went all in on Jordan Love. And I think this goes back to when they drafted him. It, it was not easy to do. Most of us called him crazy. You're, you're right there. You're a player or two away. What are you doing? Why didn't you trade up to get Brandon IU? Well, it turns out three or four years later, it wasn't just the right decision. It could be a franchise alter. It could be a league altering decision. Because if this guy's good and just maintains a level of like fringe top 10 quarterback play, obviously he's playing better than that right now. I, I'm just saying like somewhere between seven to 10, you're going to be in the playoffs all the time. Your team's just going to maintain and sustain winning. I, I If I'm a Bears fan or Vikings fan, I'm like, how does this happen? How can they do this? Because you say the one thing you say about the Detroit Lions, Stafford forever, now Goff. Like they've had pretty good quarterbacks. They've they've had solid quarterback play over the last 15 years. The Bears clearly cannot say the same. And the Vikings have always kind of been patchwork, right? Trade for Favre, uh, cousins, but it never feels like, oh, this is gonna be the guy for a decade. And that's what it feels like they have again in Green Bay, which is it's remarkable. It, it really is. Love the pod, uh, Jets fan and season ticket holder. Do you blame our multiple decade struggle more on the bad roster, management, or bad coaching? I generally think Douglas has made good picks, Garrett Wilson and Hall and Hall, but has whiffed on Becton and Zach Wilson. Oh, Brees Hall. <laughs> think uh, running Sala back is an okay plan, but generally curious. I think anytime a team consistently struggles in football where it's just, you know, every five years you should have a season where you win 10, 11 games. It's usually because poor quarterback play. You guys have had poor quarterback play in a while. Uh, Non-consistency with your coaching staff, and you've had a lot of turnover there. And clearly the front office slash the owner. And one thing that people in the NFL have always told me is like, it's not easy. One of the reasons Joe Douglas, remember when they were trying to hire him and everyone knew they were going to hire him, kind of held out and ended up getting a ton of money. Because people in his corner said, listen, Joe, there's a chance this is your one and only shot. And this is a place you're going to deal with a guy who is not easy to deal with in, in Woody Johnson. So when you do pull the trigger, make sure you get as much money as possible because it's difficult. So I, I always think it starts at the top. And listen, Jerry can be tough. But clearly the Cowboys, Jerry, they know football players. Like I, Woody and those guys have no clue about anything when it comes to football besides getting mad when you lose. And, and they always lose. Now, it's not his fault Zach Wilson sucks. That's on Joe Douglas. Put all of his chips in the middle of the table. Number two pick on Zach Wilson. Listen, Fields got flaws. Imagine if they had just taken Justin Fields. They would clearly have been a lot better than what they were. They, they wouldn't have landed, you know, Josh Allen or Mahomes or anything. But they, to me, they are, instead of winning seven games these last couple of years, maybe they're winning nine or ten because of how talented the roster is and just because of his athleticism. Now, is he the long-term answer? No, but they picked the wrong guy. Period, point blank, end of story. And they, they didn't just pick the wrong guy. They were adamant about it. And then they kept him around this season when they brought in Aaron Rodgers because they thought they could salvage him. So instead of cutting bait and acknowledging, like sometimes when you buy a stock and it's down by half, well, if it's a company that's not going to go away, like Facebook or, you know, if Apple or Netflix, you know, gets cut in half like it did a couple years ago, it's like, okay, I'll ride this out. And there are some times when it's just like, you got to cut your losses. Like this is... You can't put the milk back in the carton. Like, this is over. Clean it up and move on. And they easily could have done that. You know, signed just a solid backup behind Rodgers and had a more credible chance to be competitive. But they didn't because they tried to hold on to a draft pick that they wanted to believe in. And it cost them. It, it, it really did. Uh, love getting the Fresno State shout outs on your show from time to time. What do you think the ideal offseason looks like for Green Bay after this playoff run? How do we successfully build off the momentum? 
Well, one big picture thing that the Packers have to figure out, and this was their downfall a lot of the Rodgers years, and ultimately it was a big reason that, honestly, you could say the Packers underachieved at times this year, is defense. Defense, defense, defense. They can look like Swiss cheese on defense. Well, it's like they've invested a ton on that side of the ball. They've drafted a bunch of linemen and linebackers high. Obviously, Jair Alexander was a high pick and highly paid. So, to me, the pressure on the coordinator, just because you win a playoff game and, you know, you, you shut out essentially the Bears a couple weeks ago, they had, what, 17-9, to nine, and they didn't even score 10 points. Does that... LaFleur and Joe Barry are close friends. That's well documented. Is he good enough? Right? Because, to me, if you get rid of him, there are other good coordinators available. Right? Like, could you hire Wink Martindale? Is he an upgrade over Joe Barry? Or just, just look around the NFL, right? I mean, I, would it shock me if Brandon Staley is their next defensive coordinator, as crazy as that sounds? No, <laughs> it, it wouldn't. I wouldn't do that, but I, I do think that the coordinator change is the easiest place to just have an upgrade. Like, listen, it's going to be hard for Miami to just dramatically upgrade their defensive personnel, but they have an elite coach. So if they can just get solid players and stay healthy, you know, instead of losing a guy, two players a game, they're going to be okay on defense because Vic Fangio is a $5 million coordinator. So I I would be in the mix for an upgrade there. That, that would be my first line of business. And just because you beat the Bears and the Cowboys and let's assume you lose, which I, I'm not just going to assume. Who knows? The playoffs, maybe they're just super hot. And maybe Jordan Love is the next superstar of the league. But if they lose the 49ers, I don't think that changes the fact that Joe Barry's got to go. As a Packer fan, who should the Packers go after for the defensive coordinator? Clearly, Wink's the name that came to my mind, but just think about some of the teams that have fired coaches, right? Do the Raiders have anyone you'd be interested in? Patrick Graham's their defensive coordinator. Uh, Chargers, Brandon Staley. I, you're going to think I'm crazy. Sean McVay, they're all represented by the same agent, Richmond Flowers. Keep an eye on that. It's... I, I'm not saying that to like make fun of you guys. Like I, Brandon Staley to the Packers, I've seen them like Packers Twitter and Packers Reddit. Like they know <laughs> it's definitely on the table. So I, I, I would say guys like that. I would hire Wink over, uh, over Brandon Staley. That's for sure. Would it make sense for Miami to trade Tua to an NFC team? I think Tua would be a better fit at the Falcons or Commanders. And I think it would be interesting to see McDaniel draft and develop a quarterback. Well, I, I think you would make some sense for the Falcons, right? Dome team, warm weather division, Saints playing a dome, Carolina's not a frigid place, and who else am I missing? Carolina, New Orleans, Atlanta. I always screwed this up. What, what team am I missing here? Oh, and Tampa. So you're talking warm weather teams. Commanders don't. Like, that's a cold division. One, they play outdoors. It's cold. Philly, New York. So I I don't think the Commanders won with the second overall pick. Atlanta makes some sense. Maybe the Cowboys, right, do a little Dak for Tua. We talked about player for player. I wouldn't do that if I was the Cowboys, but it, it makes some sense. But like I said, the division, you still got to go on the road in Washington, on the road in Philly, on the road in New York. Okay, last question. Uh. With all the great head coaches stepping down, why don't they get into show business? They're already beloved by people. I'd pay to see Pete Carroll in comedy, action, thriller, tune in to Bill and Saban on a pod chopping it up. Because these guys are football coaches, man. Football is what gives them their juice. All these guys have been making, they all have $50, $100 million in the bank. Money doesn't drive them. In a weird way, fame, I mean, they have huge egos, but their fame is correlated to football. It's what they've mastered in theory. I don't know, Pete, their defense has been bad. But like when, when you spend your entire life figuring out how to do something at the highest level, it's hard to pivot in your 70s. It, it really is. It, it's easier if you're Jimmy Johnson, you retire, you go to TV for 20 years, right? You fish in Florida. I think it's harder for some of the older guys in their 70s. Like they're football coaches. Saban's going to go to TV. Saban's going to replace, I, I would guess, Lee Corso, who's, listen, absolute legend. They should not have been rolling him out on TV the last couple of years. So I think Nick Saban will go there. 
him, McAfee, Herb Street will be the group. Uh, to me, Pete Carroll wants to coach. Pete Carroll thinks he's a good coach. Traded Russell Wilson, won 18 games the next two years. And Bill Belichick definitely wants to coach. So it would be cool. Like I, I'd be, it'd be awesome to see Belichick on TV, but he's not going to do it. He's just, he's just not going to do it. So I, I hear what you're saying. That'd be awesome to hear these guys on a podcast, but they're just, that's just not what they're going to do.